reusable functionality for front-end development. Yes, and uh, first of all, uh, I work for a company uh, called Roro Media, and we are a small agency um, specialized in Drupal development. I work for this company since three years now, and beside on working um, Drupal projects, I have two passions. First is Symfony. I'm a uh, first uh, Symfony developer, and I also wrote a few bundles for Symfony. And my second passion is running. And this is a very current uh, picture of mine running 55 kilometers in the woods and in the trails. I love it. Yes, and you can find me on Strava. <laughs> <laughs> and these are my Symfony bundles. Is a very a very much uh, bunch of bundles, yes. And today I want to talk about preprocess functions, also in the second place. And preprocess functions um, are the first thing I noticed as a Drupal developer coming to, uh, as a Symfony developer coming to Drupal. And I was wondering when I opened a template, where are these variables? Uh, where are this coming from? Yeah? And um, my um, my colleagues said to me, "Oh, this you have to preprocess it." <coughs> yes. <coughs> and I wanted to ask you a question: uh, Who of you did ever use a preprocess function? Also created one. Okay. Who uh, created um, a tweak extension? Oh, much less. Yeah. Okay. Who of you um, create a tweak extension for every project? Oh, okay. Because um, when I start a project in Drupal, I every time, the first thing I do, I create an app module and I create a preprocess function. That's the first thing I, I do. I never ever uh, come on the idea to, um, to use preprocess functions. Also, never ever because I'm in the first place a Symfony dev and coming from Symfony it's absurd. I never would do this. Yes. <coughs> and I was talking about this and um developer said to me, oh Twig is only to uh, to print out variables. Who thinks this is right? Okay. <laughs> yes. You know, I was wondering because I was saying, okay, when this is true, why we are using Twig? I mean, plain PHP would do the job, no problem. Uh, yes. And <coughs> yes. Um, I want to talk about the um, disadvantages of preprocess functions. When you write a preprocess function, you have limited readability because someone uh, wants to edit the site and sees this nice um, comments in the dev mode to see, okay, this is node HTML, node projects HTML, and find it and read it and sees content or node. And inside of this node array, render array, uh, un, uh, uh, then next to this uh, more render arrays and nobody knows really where is this coming from. Yes, and um, it's not really reusable because uh, what I have seen is you write this uh, preprocess functions over and over again. Uh, and this preprocess functions, this dot module file is huge. It's like uh, I saw a dot module files over 2000 lines of uh, lines and is very, very huge. And, and it's less flexible. Yes, because when you write preprocess functions, maybe you want to, uh, to write a module, um, like the node module, and you, you say, okay, I have a template, and every template has to have this node variable. I preprocess it inside my template, and maybe some logic inside. The problem is, the developer comes and wants to, to edit the template and sees only node. They can do nothing with it, also nothing. They have to find a way to pre-process it again and to change 
what's inside of this array. Array in array in array. And it can be very messy. Yes, but what's the solution? The solution is the symphony way for me. And uh, like I said, I work uh, three years now as a symphony, as a Drupal developer, and I never ever used a preprocess function. Only for one thing, and this I will show you. Yes, to create a tweak extension is very easy. Also, you have to you have to write a class, and you see here, Drupal app. I don't uh, I don't name my module. I name my module every time app, like a Symfony app. app. <laughs> and yes, and that's it. You need this globals interface only when you want to use globals. If not, then you can put it away. It have to extend abstract ex extension, and then you can use functions filters and other stuff. Then you have to re register it as a service. Yes. The important thing is the tag have to be tweak extension and that's it. You can start. Um, flush the cache and then you can start. <laughs> you know. And tweak extension extensions are a way to extend tweak this template engine. Yes, and you can do very cool stuff with it. With it. <laughs> Drupal itself provides us with extensions, also with a, a tweak extension class. And these are functions. Everyone knows these functions. Yeah? Like, like attach library. It's very easy to use this. And yes, create attribute. I use it every time, everywhere, every day. And the next, you have um, the filters. You can have these filters, like trans, t, without, render, yes. And there are even popular modules like tweak tweak and bamboo tweak. You can render forms, render blocks, regions, views, entities, and apply image styles, um, create render arrays from entities, field lists, uh, field items, and there is even a way to write plain PHP with this PHP filter. Very easy. I never use it. I would never use it, but it's cool that it exists. Yes. And I have written an example for you how I use Twig extensions in my project. And this is a small um, partial in the project. And you have here this uh, get term children. And it's very easy and very readable, you see what's happening here. It's, it's not uh, you have a term children here as a variable and you don't know where it comes from. You see, okay, you have the product, the, the product, and you can print it out, and then you see, okay, here it gets, it's getting fetched. Then you have this get translation also, and the nice thing in the IDE is you can every time use command, click, and the IDE uh, jumps to the code. It's abstracted like a preprocess function, but you can every time jump to the code. I, I, in also in mine, in my PHP storm, it's very easy to jump. And this is not the case when you use preprocess functions. Also you have to search where is it, and this is very easy. You click on it and you are there. Yes, here's the code. Very easy. You can see get term children. You fetch the entity manager, get the storage, load the children and you can use it there. And the same is for get translation, you fetch the translation. Ta -ta. Yeah. Next example is how I use sometimes the globals. In this case, I have a array, and this is only styling inside. And in this styling class, is there are some tailwind CSS classes. I use around the, the the project. And these are tests, you can even test. Like instance of is often used. Is object, is string. Yes, I use it like this. Here you can see um, the instance of test. And this is just an example. I would never do this in a real world, in a real life uh, project. Who knows? Who can you do this better? Uh, how you can do this better? Any idea? Also this line 
this PHP and PHP is instance of. It's very long to show you this test. When you want to do this cl more clean, what you can do? What? Uh, please print a link to uh, the spec download catalog. Only PDF exists as an instance of media. And then uh, print the download rules uh, extension for the PDF element or doesn't print the link. So I would do, I would create a tweak extension filter. <laughs> <laughs> this. And it's very readable. PDF is major object. You can you create your PHP code and then get the download, download URL. And this is also a filter I can easily write and reuse in every project, in every template, wherever I want to. Yes. It's very short, very readable. When I read this, I know it's exactly what's happening. What's happening here? Yes. And for every project we create, we are creating uh, our own tweak extensions, filters, tests, globals, and uh, functions. And then we we came across this um, craft CMS. Does somebody know something about craft CMS? It's a small CMS and I wrote two years ago um, a blog kind of site with it and they have these entity queries. And you can fetch data from your Twig templates and, and use it and I was wondering maybe we can create this for Drupal and this is the result. Yes, you can, as you can see, you can query entities uh, by type, you can add conditions, order by limit, and then, of course, you can fetch it. Yes, it, it's like this. You can set your variables, query for entries, and these entries maybe, um, I should have called it nodes, because in the end, these are nodes, but in QuestTMS, it's called entries, and I called it entries, now it's called entries, yes. But it's Arnold from type object and you fetch all. That's very easy and you can do this even for taxonomy terms. Yes, the next example, you query a node of type project where the title is target and you fetch it all. Here you query a node of type project and this is a condition group with title, stargate, and description, my description, and fetch all. This is a complex example. And uh, I have to say, I would never do this in a real project. It's only for example here, because it's too much. Um, what, you, what do you think what you can do to make this even more cleaner and not so big? A function. I would create a tweak function, like fetch similar calls, and then do this stuff inside the function. And if I'm interested later what's happening there, I press my command thing and pff, I see the PHP code. This is too much. I, I don't want to recommend you doing this inside your tweak templates, but it's, it's showing what you can do with this, uh, with this module. Here you are. Uh, querying nodes of type article and you see what tags are inside and fetch nodes of the same tag, also containing the same tag. Yes, tags, like taxonomy ta tags. Yes, that's the next point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and the same you do with the with the category, you see if there is a category, one category, you map over it because the in and um, this, this entity query needs um, an array of IDs. And then you add the condition and you get, you can change it. 
you can chain it. As you can see, you can chain this all together. And in the end, you order it, limit it, print it out, and iterate over it. It's very easy. What's the downside of it? Like you <laughs> already mentioned, the downside of using this uh, module is caching. Of course, you have to set your own cache tags. Yeah. Like I did here. And this is the um, one of the very less occasions when I use uh, preprocess functions to set this cache, uh, this cache tags or cache contexts. Yes. And by now, it's only for nodes and taxonomy terms. It's not for, for any entity, but this is something we, um, we are thinking about because it, it would make sense, of course. <coughs> yes, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you will use often more often tweak extensions and less often preprocess functions. <laughs> Any questions? It's a strict query module and can we use it? And can we find it somewhere? Yes, strict query, Google it. It's yes, yes. It's tested, it's documented. You can use it. Hi, I remember doing all this sort of uh, stuff in uh, uh, Who, who's talking? <laughs> okay. Uh, in in Twig templates and being told off by a Symfony developer that you shouldn't put sort of logic and complex stuff in in Twig templates. Yes. Where where is where is the world at? We seem to be going like. No, it's it's like this. He's it, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because I told you when you saw this big chunk, never do this. It's yeah. too much. Yeah. It has to be small and precise, and so you have to make it like it's good readable. So call a function, but all the main logic yes, happens make a function on, on out the of PHP it, yes. yeah. And maybe make a function with parameters to make it more granular. That's nice, yes? Cool. Yes. Not make big, big templates with if-else. That's not what I uh, tell you <laughs> to do.